Joining us right now in the Great Midwest Bank Hotline, a guy who uh, coached him uh, over at Cal for a year, the Cal Bears offensive coordinator, Tony Franklin, is on the Great Midwest Bank Hotline. Tony, appreciate the time. Good morning. How are you? I'm wonderful, guys. How are you all? Not too bad. Not too bad at all. Um, talk to us about Richard Rodgers and what we should expect. Uh, like we said, before in the first half of his career, he was a guy that was a big blocking tight end, but then he made the switch and became a heck of a playmaker for you guys. Well, Richard, uh, I, I think it's a little bit of a misconception in the fact that uh, before we got there that he was a hand down every every play, you know, tight end type guy. Um, obviously, they were in more tight end sets than we were because we weren't in, in very many at all. Uh, but he still, you know, the, the, the previous staff used him in similar ways that we did at times to where he was a stand-up guy. He was just a lot bigger. He had a lot of weight on him, and uh, when we got there, we play extremely fast. Um, you know, we usually are in the top five in the nation in snaps per game. So it's it's something to where that if you're carrying any extra weight at all, you're you're not going to be able to play. And um, so we asked Richard when we got there to lose 30 pounds, and he did. Uh, he played last year at around 250, uh, which was, in my opinion, a really good weight for him. Um, and uh, he was a good productive player for us. Uh, I think what the fans can expect from Richard is that he's he has the best set of hands uh, of anybody that I've been around since I've been coaching football. He's got incredible ball skills, um, and uh, there's really, to be honest with you, there's not a there's not a, a, a ball that's thrown anywhere near him that he can't catch. He's just a, tr- a tremendous hand-eye coordination guy, and so he'll make some he'll make some spectacular plays in practice that you just shake your head and go, how, how did that happen? And, so I think the fans are going to be excited to see him do that with, with uh, Aaron. It's kind of a need for tight end. It doesn't appear that Jermichael Finley's coming back. That neck injury and all that. I, you know, it's really iffy if he's if he ever comes back and plays another down in the NFL too. But you know, the Packers have a need for a guy like who could fit Finley's role to stretch the defense. Is he, is he one of these guys who you can line up wide too and and play him in that role? Yeah, I mean Richard's a guy that um, you, you could you could line him up as a wide receiver and versus press. Uh, mm-hmm. He could be extremely physical with a small, you know, the, the average size corner that's going to be on him, and, uh, and and you're not going to notice him at all in the fact that he's out wide. Uh, I think he fits more uh, in the in what I consider to be the new prototypical tight end. The, the tight ends today are either basically offensive tackles with a, with an 80 number on them, or they're guys that can run and stretch the field and make plays. And, and Richard falls more into that category. Um, you know, he's not super fast, but he's fast enough. Um, he's got a good body on him. He's got great body control. And, and the thing, Richard, Richard's really a good athlete. Um, Richard probably could have, we, we probably could have moved him to quarterback and, and trained him for two weeks, and he would have been as good a quarterback as you'll see. He's got a, he's got a great arm. Uh, he can do anything athletically, and he's just a good overall football player. And, and he's a really good young man. You know, he's raised by good people, and he's, he's a good person, a good human being. And I think I'll be surprised if he's not. Honestly, I think he'll be a better pro player than he was as a college player. He was just he was just getting into his own, and uh, if he'd stayed another year, I think he would have been a first-team All-American and a guy that would have been a, a first-round draft pick. But, uh, you know, obviously um, he, he did what he felt was best for him, and we wish him the best. Yeah, we don't need him to play quarterback. We got another Rodgers who's pretty good at that area. <laughs> So if this yeah, Rodgers well, just catches balls, be, it's good. I wouldn't be surprised if, if, if they try him out uh, <laughs> to uh, throw a 70-yard reverse pass. He, he, he can throw it that far. Awesome. Well, yeah, there was some need for backup, a third stringer last year. The Packers needed a backup like eight times. Yeah. They brought in Vince Young, for God's <laughs> sakes. Uh, well, talk- they, might, they might need to give him a rep or two then. <laughs> Talking with uh, Cal offensive coordinator Tony Franklin about the newest Packers tight end Richard Rodgers on Sports Radio 1250 WSSP. What is that conversation like when a new coaching staff comes in, a new system comes in, and you have to tell a kid to lose 30 pounds? I want to take notes because uh, my co-host is trying to drop 20, <laughs> so I want to know what you said. That way we can try to help Chuck go on the diet. He's been trying to go on for 47 years? Yeah, 47 years diet, yeah. Well, basically the conversation went kind of like this. I just said you're fat and you're slow. You'll never play if you don't lose 30 pounds. So that was – Pretty much it. Chuck, you're fat, you're <laughs> slow, and you're not going to play on this radio show if you don't drop 30. <laughs> Just 20 is all I need. So how, how you know, did you? The great, the, the great thing with him was that is that you know he took it and he did it and he and he did it. You know, obviously our strength coach does a great job. But the bottom line is is that you have to have discipline uh, in your life in order to be able to do that. And 
and and he did it. He didn't complain about it, or at least he didn't complain out loud to us about it. And he came out, and he was a lot better player. He was faster, and you know, he was he was able to play better in space, and um, you know he was able to do the stuff that we wanted him to be able to do. Seems like from what you're telling me, he could be a matchup problem for linebackers too. Yeah, especially in the NFL. To, to me, the NFL is a lot easier to run routes than it is in college, uh, because what happens in, in college is that you can hold and grab and pull and contact all over the field. You can be 15 yards downfield and get collisioned and knocked out of your route, whereas in the NFL they can't touch you after five yards. And so when I watch NFL film, I mean, and to, to me, everybody talks about the transition, how hard it is, and obviously the players are faster and stronger and all that stuff. But as far as running routes, it's a lot easier to run routes in the NFL because nobody puts their hands on you. Mm-hmm. And I watch NFL film and I go, God, I mean, what a dream if you can ever make it to the NFL. You know, your life is actually a lot easier because nobody touches you when you when you release off the line of scrimmage. So I really believe that, that Richard is going to be a, a, a really good fit um, because I think he'll be effective in doing that. And he's got, he's got good feel for the game. Obviously, his father being a, an NFL coach has helped him. And he's got a good feel for the game. He understands how to run routes. And, uh, you know, our guys do a good job of teaching that stuff as well. So I think that the Packers picked up a, a really good player. What does he need to work on the most? Well, I think the biggest thing with him is going to be, you know, getting back comfortable with a hand on the line and blocking the defensive end. Uh, it's not something that we didn't ask him to do that a lot, but I'll say this, that if they go and they watch the Stanford game, uh, the last game of the season, you know, obviously we were, we were a really bad football team last year, and, and um, you know, we played with almost all freshmen and sophomores, and, and um, uh, the last game of the season we, we played with Richard with a hand on the ground probably 90% of the game, and he really did a good job. And, and uh, you know, I talked with Richard when he was trying to make his decision of whether to leave or not and told him that we would do, you know, we would have him with a hand on the ground a lot more, you know, this coming season if he came back. Um, but he did a really good job in that game, and I would not be surprised if, if teams that watched that game didn't see what the Packers saw, which is, you know, this is a guy that can have a hand on the ground he can be effective blocking in the box. And we asked him to block in the box a lot, but uh, most of the time he was in the slot coming into the box rather than the hand on the ground mm-hmm. and going into it. So I think he'll be fine. He's just got to get – he's you know he'll have to get a little stronger to, to block defensive linemen. And, but, you know, most of, most of the really good tight ends in the NFL today that are, that are considered to be great ones, you know, have a hard time blocking me. So – you know, most of those guys are known for greatness because they run down the field, catch the ball, and score touchdowns. So he doesn't like the block? Is that what you're saying, kind of? No, no. Richard Richard doesn't mind blocking. Right. We just didn't We didn't ask him to put a hand on the ground and okay. to do that. Richard, Richard will be – I think Richard will be effective because he was very effective in the final game of the season mm-hmm. uh, as a blocker, and, okay. um, and and I think he'll be fine. I mean, you know, he, he, the kid did what we asked him to do and did a good job with it, and, and he'll do the same thing. How, how is he in the red zone? I know he had one touchdown catch last year, but how do you look at him as a red zone target? It, you know, he's fine. It, it was my fault more than his fault, and I think if you look at it, it's, I did a poor job uh, of doing it. And, and to be honest with you, we weren't, we weren't in the red zone a lot. Uh, we were, uh, we were If we scored, we scored from out on the field somewhere, and we were not a very good short yardage football team. And really, in hindsight, I did a poor job of using him in, in short yardage and in the red zone and, and should have done a better job with it. So, you know, she, like I said, I, I, I believed that he could be a better NFL football player than he was in college because part of it was he just grew into his body. He just started to get everything together, and I think he was right at the tip of being a fabulous college football player and just, you know, did like, you know, a lot of kids do. He decided that it was time to move on, and that's what he did. He's one of the best offensive minds in the country when it comes to uh, football offenses. Tony, really appreciate the time so much. The uh, the knowledge on uh, on Rodgers is going to be great, and I know our Packer fans that are all listening to us right now appreciate it. Thanks for joining us. All right, thank you, guys, and good luck. You too. It's Tony Franklin, the offensive coordinator from uh, the Cal Bears. He's got uh, a website. I don't know if you saw this or not. He's got his own, like, uh, coaching website, his own Tony Franklin sem- uh, system seminar, mm-hmm. and he's got this unbelievable offense that turns high school teams and college teams from one of the worst offenses in the country to one of the best offenses in the country. Former offensive coordinator at Auburn. Yep. He uh, he went from um, Auburn 
to Middle Tennessee State as the offensive coordinator, then a lot tech, put up huge mm-hmm. numbers at La Tech, and took uh, the job as a Cal assistant coach when they hired Sonny Dykes over mm-hmm. there. And they put up huge numbers again last year. I like talking to these college coaches of these draft yeah. picks because you get to find a little bit more because these guys were with them every day mm-hmm. and know a little bit about him. And, you know, he, he said that they asked him to block late in the year. Mm-hmm. Um, and he did a nice job. You always wonder when a tight end comes in, when he's a pass catcher, how well does he like the block? You know, Andrew Corliss is a good blocker, so yep. if they do ever run two tight end sets, they might split him out wide in case they need him. I like the idea of him as a red zone target. He's a yep. bigger kid, six foot four. Uh, what do you say, 237 pounds? I mean, 257. 257, thank yep. you. It's a big boy. Yep. It's a big boy. Nice uh, nice get for the Packers, and we appreciate Tony joining us on the Great Midwest Bank Hotline. Turn the key with GMB now through July. If you're looking to buy or refinance a home, like Great Midwest Bank on Facebook and learn how you can live mortgage-free. Great Midwest Bank, since 1935, simply local. I've-